So we have uh, just a slight internet problem. We have gigabit here, which means we're getting effectively uh, 1,000 megabits down, and we also get, I believe, 1,000 megabits up. Of course, that's theoretical limits. We actually get, in, in actuality, somewhere around five to 600 megabits per second, uh, which is still really good. I mean, that's gonna push you around, just divide that by eight, that's your megabyte download. So if you're downloading a game from Steam, you're still gonna hit 60, 70 megabytes per second, which is really good. You can download a you know 50 gigabyte game in, in minutes, practically. Uh, but the issue with this apartment, this is not a place that we own, we are just renting here, uh, is that we only have one active uh, RJ45 port, right, built into the wall, which means we have my <laughs> my modem is in the office, and that modem is in and of itself not a great Wi-Fi router. You know, the built-in modem router deals are usually pretty bad. Uh, so I have a Google Home uh, Wi-Fi kit we're going to use. Not the best for this scenario, uh, but we're going to switch to that anyways. I think it's still going to be better than uh, than what we are currently running. Now this is going to come in handy because uh, this right here is a uh, 12 port patch panel. So we have fiber and what that means is a single little cable, I'll show you in a second, runs into a box and then from there you have a single Cat5e cable, should be Cat6 but it's Cat5e in this case, uh, runs into a, a small single port patch panel and then from there it basically makes one of these Ethernet ports hot, just one, and it's in the office. So all these other Ethernet ports built into the walls don't work at all. Uh, so we're gonna patch the rest of those Cat5e cables in there uh, to this patch panel, and then we're gonna move the router, or excuse me, the modem into uh, the panel as well, where the fiber runs into the apartment, and then we're gonna light up all of these RJ45 ports, and uh, hopefully give ourselves some decent Wi-Fi as well as uh, you know, wired connection throughout the apartment. So we're gonna go into that closet right now. For some reason, they put the, the, the fiber termination in the closet. I don't understand why they did that. All right, so this is where the fiber terminates in the apartment. I, it doesn't look like much as you see these, you know, cat 5 e cables running everywhere. Uh, this is our single patch panel of sorts. So what that means is instead of having to, you know, cut all these wires down, exposing the copper and then uh, wiring those directly to a, a panel like this, all you have to do is run the, uh, the insulated wire into the patch panel and then press a little lever down and that effectively creates uh, or completes the circuit between all these wires and the RJ45 port. Uh, now we have the, this is the fiber line, this single yellow wire right here. That is where the fiber comes from. Uh, and this box, there's a bunch of magic goes on in here. I'm not gonna attempt to explain what happens. But anyway, out the other side, you get a Cat5e, should be Cat6 cable into the patch port. And this right here is the Cat5e cable that runs into my office. You can see it's the only one that's hot. And then these other Cat5e cables really do uh, nothing. So we're gonna strip all of these down and we're gonna take our 12 port patch panel, which is overkill, but whatever. Uh, and we're gonna hook up all of these to the patch panel. And then we're gonna pull the uh, modem in here and light all of them up instead of just this single one. All right, so we need to find a way to fit this modem and our 12 port patch panel in this little cutout in the wall. All right, now you can see uh, we have our four ports here in, in the modem. Uh, we could use a switch if we needed more ports, uh, but the the issue is, right, <laughs> we don't want to have to wire four of these connections onto the ends of these uh, cat 5 cables, and uh, that's really what we need to do to get these hot. So the patch panel eliminates the need for that. This is definitely overkill. We don't have 12 ports, uh, but it's kind of future-proof. It's nice to have something this hardcore, and I guess we'll just kind of place it on top, and then I have four uh, Cat6 cables just for the sake of future proofing uh, that will run from here to the modem and that will heat up all of these. Okay, so what you're looking at here was the original port in the office. It's now connected to the patch panel. I'll show you how I did this in a second. I just wanna show you how it works uh, kind of in principle. So in between each of these little grooves uh, are, are pieces of metal. And the further you push down these wires, uh, they kind of cut into the insulation of each wire and then of course complete that circuit. Um, we went ahead and tested this one. So you can see we have the Cat6 cable uh, running into the modem and uh, we're getting almost the exact same uploads and downloads uh, wired that we were originally with the modem in the office. So that's good. That means the connections are all in check and we're gonna keep doing this for the other three Cat5 cables. And then we will uh, test those and then try to clean this up because wow, this is, 
Well, if I can get the focus to sit, there we go. Yeah, this is pretty messy right now. Now I don't have the patch tool, which means uh, I am doing this in a very suggestive way. I do not suggest you guys do it this way. Uh, buy the tool for 20 bucks or so if you are gonna do this more than once. Uh, this is probably the only time I'm gonna do it, at least in this apartment, so. I'll use a very thin flathead screwdriver and just jam these cables all the way down. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So this is the brown solid wire and I'm gonna push this as far down into the tool as I can. And then uh, I'll kind of do this for each cable first and then I'll come through again and I'll push it all the way down. Next step you can see is orange and we have the little key here which is really nice. So solid orange on top. Okay, all right, now here's the sketchy part, part that I do not recommend you copy. Going to take my flathead screwdriver. You want as thin as possible because the uh, the gaps through these channels are very thin. You don't want a big one because you'll end up spreading the channel distance and then you might not get proper contact. Uh, <laughs> this still isn't again good, but it's better than nothing. Push it all the way down. You'll hear it click a few times. And I know it's kind of hard to get up close, but you can see that cable, that brown one, is all the way down now inside. So we can assume that that uh, is making proper contact. Do it again for the rest of these wires, straight in without breaking anything. So we'll definitely want to check these connections. Problem is, I don't know where <laughs> this cable goes. So we'll have to kind of poke around the remaining ethernet ports uh, in, the, uh, uh, <laughs> in the apartment and see which one of these is hot. So let's go do that real quick. Okay, <laughs> just take a 100 foot Cat5 e cable and uh, we connect it to one random port back there, actually the one behind the living room TV, and we're going to see if we get any wired connection here on Lisa's PC. We have a one in three shot, so we'd be pretty darn lucky if we figured that out. Okay, so it's not that one, so now we need to figure out where it actually goes. Alright, so this is the other port. This is the one in our bedroom, which we don't really need, but just out of curiosity, see if we'll see if that one's hot. Not connected. So... By process of elimination, it must be the remaining Ethernet port, which I don't know, I don't know where it is. And just for reference, each of these speed tests will be different. Um, you know, we're using the at t speed test here. You could use Xfinity's, you could use uh, speedtest.net. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're all gonna give you different results. They're all tied to different servers, but just wanna test consistency here. Downloads were 746 megabits per second. It's about 75% of our cap. That's pretty good. Uploads are even higher. Almost 900 megabits per second, which is good for Lisa, because this, <laughs> this is her streaming PC. Hey, come back, hey, come back, hey, come back. How do you feel about having a gigabit connection? That's pretty good. I love it. Okay, so this one right here, this is the connection that you just saw for Lisa's PC. As far as I'm aware, we only have three uh, ethernet ports in the apartment, so kind of concern where that fourth one's going. It could be this blank patch right here. Uh, I'll, I'd have to unscrew that and, and check. But uh, anyway, we're gonna patch the fourth one up. That should be the one in the bedroom. We're not actually gonna use the one in the bedroom, but for good measure, we'll do it anyway. Just so, you know, if we put a TV in there or something with, uh, with an ethernet port on it, we can hook that up to it and have super fast internet. This isn't gonna be a clean cut. It's not gonna seal the cable like a patch tool would, uh, but it's at least gonna get rid of this of the frays. So I just take wire cutters, I get as close to this as I can, and I just cut them down. So that's good looking enough. You can see we ran all of our cables on the inside here. So it keeps things clean. And then we can put our cover back on. I'll just press it down. Okay, cool. So there it is. All right, now all this excess Cat5 cable, we can just tuck into the wall. No one's gonna see it up there, plenty of space between the studs. Push it all up. Uh, these are coax lines, these black ones. I don't need these either, so we can actually push these up there. I'll leave a bit of it exposed in case anyone in the future needs it. All right, so we got our patch panel kind of squished here between the magic box and the, the frame of this little box. And remember the second port? We don't know where that goes. We only have three Ethernet ports in the uh, apartment, so that's why that one's blank. I'm going to plug the fourth Cat6 cable, or the third one rather in this case, into the fourth port. So now we've got three of these, and we're going to run these into uh, the back of the modem. And the modem will fit nicely right here. So I'm going to try my best to make it look pretty. I doubt anyone other than 
you guys online are going to see this, and I doubt anyone in person will see this, so it's not really that big a deal. This is like a, a mini ITX PC build, that's what it reminds me of. And we have this plastic shield. It's nice they use plastic. Uh, AT&T was telling me that they used to use metal ones, and that really made no sense, because you're you put your modem in here, and it's acting as your router, you're kind of sealing off a lot of that potential connection, so let's hope this fits. All right. And there we go, good as new. All right, and this last uh, piece here is the router. Now I am treating this as a router currently, and I have the Netgear router, or the, the, actually the AT&T modem, which also has a built-in router, uh, in pass-through mode, or as close to pass-through mode as I possibly can. Uh, so it's still natting and all that stuff, which means we have double natting going on here because this is its own router as well, so its own protocols to take care of. Uh, and that's gonna slow things up just a bit. In an ideal situation, this could be either an extender, uh, or I could put the modem in full pass-through mode, but the problem is we have all of our um, cables for the Ethernet ports in the apartment running uh, through the modem. So we can't just disable the modem, uh, which is kind of a shame. So we'll maybe at some point figure out how to bypass that. I know some people have figured out how to do it with AT&T, but for now I'm okay with this. I went ahead and tested Wi-Fi throughout the apartment. Still getting around two to 300 megabits per second on a phone and phone Wi-Fi antennas aren't as good as laptops usually. So uh, laptops should score even higher than that. Uh, but this is good enough. You know, I'm not looking for a serious, like, commercial-grade solution. I just wanted something that was not the, uh, the AT&T modem because it just was really spotty. Sometimes the connection would totally drop and it would confuse the phones. Other devices hooked up to the Wi-Fi. So uh, this seems to be a lot more stable. Tested on the TV, uh, my cell phone, my laptop, and uh, I'm satisfied right now with the results. All right, so that was a fun project. I have not done anything like that before. The, the closest I've ever gotten to, like, hardcore networking is uh, setting up a router and a modem. That's really it. So uh, it was nice to kind of work with a patch board for once. I actually bought that one from Home Depot, so I didn't have to order it online. It's kind of like commercial grade stuff. Like you expect like contractors and stuff to work with that uh, when they're setting up the uh, internet capabilities of your new home or new apartment. Uh, I was really glad I didn't have to use something like this. This would have sucked because there's eight of those small wires inside each cat 5 cable and then having to strip each of those on both ends and uh, wire them together, either, either solder them or you know wrap them with electrical tape, whatever. It would have been kind of sketch, uh, but that uh, patch board came in real handy. So uh, in the future, wherever I go, wherever we move, I'll take that with me and we can have a, a much easier time setting things up on the network side. I know I'm kind of a noob at this still. I'm not acting like I'm a you know, full-fledged pro at this stuff. I do want to thank Will for helping me out because Will is a pro in this space. Uh, and uh, maybe in the future we'll do more videos like this where, you, you know, you and I are both kind of learning at the same time, assuming you don't know uh, much about the networking stuff, which is definitely my case. If you guys like the video, thumbs up, you know what to do. Thumbs down for the opposite. If you hate everything right, like, click the red subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching, and thanks for learning with us.